In this video, I will cover more on inference of knowledge-based uh, systems, logical agents. Remember, the knowledge base is a set of, of uh, proposition logic clauses. Now I'm going to talk about the forward and backward chaining algorithms for this. First, a little bit about a horn form. A knowledge base, we said, is a conjunction of, of clauses, right? We So far, we put them in conjunctive normal form, but we're going to expand this definition to say that they are, or specify this definition to say they're, they have to be a set of horn clauses, okay? A horn clause is a clause where at most one literal is positive. So for example, uh, in here, not P and or not Q or V is a horn clause, assuming that uh, a literal is positive, it, it doesn't have a not in front of it, okay? Just, just for the sake of argument. Also, not P or not W is also a horn clause because horn clauses say that at most one literal is positive. Here, none of them are, but yeah, if you say at most one is, yeah, this complies. However, if you have two positive literals, then this is not a horn clause. Okay, so uh, we're going to use horn clauses because they have uh, nice properties. Also, a more specific case of a horn clause is a definite clause where exactly one literal is positive. The one of the good things about horn clauses is that they can be rewritten as implications, okay? With the fact, the fact in, in, the, in the preposition symbol, or a conjunction of symbols as the premise, and then the implied symbol, and then a symbol or conclusion in the, what we call the head. This is the premise, implies head. That's, that's the idea of horn clauses. And we do this by our laws. We know that alpha implies beta can be written as um, can be written as not alpha or beta. Okay, so for example, if I have a horn clause here. Right, and I know that one of the clauses is true. I will put it towards the end. One of them is positive, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use this and this in this rule: alpha, not alpha or or um, or beta. So I'm going to not this guy. I'm going to negate this side. If I negate this side by De Morgan laws. The negations go away and the or becomes an and here. So then I end up with C and B. This becomes an implication and A stays the same. Why is this useful? Well, for several reasons. One of them is that then the rules are all like premises implies fact or a rule. So for example, not, not a fact, but a rule. So for example, um, Today is raining and I have an umbrella. So if it's raining and I have an umbrella, then I won't get wet. These are rules in the in the in the form of if these things happen, then this other thing. And that is a natural way to put facts in, into our knowledge base. For example, if I feel the a breeze in one one and I feel something else, then there is a pit somewhere else, right? So I can, I can, the, these look like rules. Also, they're easy to simplify because if I have a set of, of, uh, of statements that are true, right? And I have a conjunction of those statements, right? Imply something by modus ponens. If these are all true, then this guy here has to be true in order for the whole expression to hold. So I can just simplify this to beta. This intuition is going to help us with forward chaining, okay, and also backward chaining. Um, the forward chaining algorithm, basically what it does, here it's an algorithm form, but I'm going to uh, show it to you working in a second. What the forward chaining algorithm does is that it'll have all possible symbols in my knowledge base that has this horn clauses, okay? It will have all possible symbols. And it will try to infer at each time 
and it will try to um, infer each time how many symbols are true in 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 the in the knowledge base, and then once it once it goes through all the rules, okay, once it goes through all the rules, if it finds that my query, whatever I've asked the system, remember the goal here is that I have a knowledge base and I'm asking a question to that knowledge base, a true false question. If after evaluating all the facts, all the facts using this property of horn clauses, if after evaluating all the facts I end up with a, a true statement implies my query, then I am in a good place, then I've proved the query. So for example, let's say you have a, uh, uh, a set of a knowledge base here, right? A knowledge base here in horn clauses. And this is my query, Q is my query. And I want to know if my knowledge base implies my query, right? If some, some, some implication implies my query. This is, I'm sorry, this is, this is what I want to prove. That there's some P that implies that I'm safe or that I can land there or that there are no pits in some square. This is what I want to prove. And this is my knowledge. Now, I can represent the knowledge base, so you can see this thing working as a as a um, and or tree. These are called and or trees. And or trees. My handwriting is awful. And or. In which we, we do it like this. So for example, this rule L and M implies P. I got L. And M, they're, they're together with this arc here. That means that I'm, I'm putting an and between these two literals, and and P, and then there's this little s P here. Okay? That's how these trees work. So for example, I have A and B implies L. A here, B here, and so it's A and B implies L. I also have A and P implies L, so A and P, the arrow that goes from P to L there, A and P, right? So I can write all these rules. P implies Q right there, that's, that's a simple one. A and B by themselves, right? So this is an and or graphic. So I can represent this and or graphic. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to count for each symbol here, how many literal the premise? So, for example, from the P implies Q, there's only one literal in the premise. For the arrow that ends in P, there's two literals in the premise, right? The arrow that ends in P, this implication has two literals, L and M. Um, for the A and P that ends in L, P and A that ends in L, there's two literals, right? For the A and B that ends in L, there's two literals, and so on and so forth. So I just count the literals, right? These are not implications, so they have no count. And I also know, because they're not implications, that these are true value. These, these are the things that I know to be true in my, in my knowledge base. I can have sensed them, who knows, but I know them to be true. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start examining from the things that I know to be true. I'm going to look at A and I'm going to look at all the clauses in which A is a premise. This one here and this one here. Both go to L. And I will decrease the number of, of uh, literals that I had before in that table. So it is in this clause A and B imply L. I'll decrease that number. And it's also in the A and P imply L. I'll decrease that number. Okay. Now I'm going to look for the other thing that I know to be true, B. B is in one clause here. I'll decrease that number to zero. And B is also in this clause involved here. I'll decrease that number to one. Now, if for any clause I go to the count of that of literals to be zero, then I will add the, 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 the head. I will add the head to the symbols that I want to explore, because now I know that L is true, because A and B imply L, L is true, right? So then I'm going to explore L. I'll explore, I'll explore L, and I will decrease the number um, of literals of all the, I will decrease the count of literals of 
all the clauses where L is involved, in this case, two, this one and this one. So the one with M becomes has a count of zero at this point, and the, the one that goes to P has a count of one. Because the one with M has a count of zero, basically I've, I've deduced that L and B are true, then M is also true. I add it to the set of, of uh, expressions that I'm going to evaluate. I'll evaluate M, right? And M is uh, and M is in this clause, right? So I will reduce that clause to zero, right? I will reduce this clause to zero. Now, because I know that M is true, I'll reduce that clause to zero. And also, um, that means that P is going to be true and it's going to be the one that I will explore again. Okay, this is two steps in one. P is going to be the one that I'm going to be exploring now. And P, remember, has L, so has L right? Has L there, so I'm, I'm marking L again. This, the clause that had P and L <clears throat> here, this became zero. So I kind of know that L is true now, but I knew that before. So the double circle represents that I'm, I'm kind of looping through that variable again. But now, as you see, all of them have zero. So then I add, just add Q to the statements to evaluate, right? So, well, I evaluate L, and then I add Q to the statements to evaluate, which is, and I assume it to be true, because all the implications to Q now have zero, have a count of zero, meaning we prove them true all the way through. That is how forward chaining uh, works. Now, let's look at backward chaining. We work backwards from a query, and we prove the query by backward chaining, right? So we look at the query, we, um, we have a rule like this, right? P implies Q. This is my query. I will backward chain this P. Now, I don't know what P is, so I will backward chain that P, and so on and so forth until I find something that is true, and then I recursively evaluate that and, and move back up again. Uh, I will avoid loops by checking the, that the new sub goal is already in the goal stack, and I will check if something has already been proved true or has already failed. So let's do the same thing with backward chaining now. You have the prepositional logic, now I've turned this into the and or tree, and we're gonna prove Q by backward chaining. We know that A and B are true. So Q by backward chaining implies that I have to prove P by backward chaining. P by backward chaining implies that I have to prove L and M by backward chaining. L by backward chaining implies that I'll have to prove um, A by backward chaining, right? Now, I know that A is true. Now, I have to prove A, right? But I don't anymore, because I know it's true. Now, the same thing, now to prove L, I need to prove the B by backward chaining, which I also know is true. So these two are true. Okay, I'm proving L. So L becomes true now. Because L and B are true, right? Because now M, instead of exploring L, now M is going to go to explore B. I know that, that that is true. Then M is going to become true. Because L and M are true, P is going to become true. And because P is true, Q is going to become true. So this is how backward chaining works. Now, just a small discussion about these things. Um, forward chaining is data driven. So we recognize objects and we're always making a decision. Forward chaining might do a lot of work that it's irrelevant to the goal because I have to infer every possible thing in my knowledge base. Okay? But it's data driven. It's going to be generating new asser uh, assertions. However, backward chaining is goal driven. It's appropriate for problem solving. So where is one thing? What's the result of something? because you start from the goal and you don't explore unnecessary um, clauses, okay? Forward chaining is if you want to make more inferences, right? Because you explore everything and you will, become, you will make a lot of inferences. Backward chaining, you start from the goal and it just proves your goal, that's it. Now, the complexity of backward chaining can be much less than linear size of the knowledge base, right? Because you might end up exploring a lot less clauses. Than the knowledge base. So backward chaining is preferred if you want to know the goal. Forward chaining is preferred if you want to know what else can you infer while you're doing this. So for example, in the Wumpus game, 
Backward chaining will get you the answer whether there's a pit in one, two. Forward chaining will also get you that answer, but it might get you other things, like there's a there's no pit in some other thing and there's a pit someplace else. It'll get you all possible assessments. It depends on what you want, which one you use.